Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. Okay, welcome to the next part of this um, Hulk pinup inking demo. Um, if you haven't seen the first video, I would definitely check it out. I'll put a link in the description below, as well as an introduction to Crowquill inking, brush inking, and um, two other videos that I think will be helpful. And I also wanted to thank, um, I have some Patreon supporters. So James Smith, Jason Davis, and Rob Stilwell, thank you guys very, very much for your donations to the channel. Um, someone had asked in the comments about cleaning my brush or setting up my brush. Hopefully this is focused. I just stick it in like um, clean water and just dip it. And you can go pretty far with this um, in terms of like just getting the brush clean. And I'll tap it and then sometimes I'll wipe it off on a towel. So no major deal. Hopefully that's clear. I replaced the lens on the broken part of my camera today and it didn't work. So I've got a backup and I'm going to try to switch it. But right now I'm recording where I can't actually see what I'm doing. So um, anyway, here we go. Uh, today I am going to go in and start doing some contours of the actual anatomy. Even though this might go black to black, I'd rather just block in the muscles just so that I know what I'm going to do. And you'll notice that I rotate the page a lot just to get the angle that I want for throwing the line as effectively as possible. I actually moved my camera down a little bit and this is a little easier today. Yesterday was hard. My head was so far back from the page um, and I'm uh, definitely a croucher when it comes to inking. I, I get right on top of the um, piece. So David's stuff, I tend to go kind of angular with things. So hopefully I'm in frame. Um, but yeah, I, I uh, I sort of take his lines and perfect them in a weird way. And I don't, I don't mean that his weren't perfect when he put them down, but um, you know I mean? I have, to, I have to make a decision of what the shape of these pieces will be. So I try to think of anatomy of like what he's indicating and then um, mimic that with um, what I'm putting down. You know, these are little cast shadows and planes that dip in and out. And again, I'll talk about this in one second. But, um, you know, be mindful of the actual three-dimensional form that you're putting your line work on. Because, so this little piece right here, if you really think about it, do you see how Davis got these lines that curve like this? So this is a chunk of meat that sits on this guy's arm. And the planes really go like this, okay? And then as they get down here, they actually potentially, well, on this, because of the perspective, they would stay going like this. Um, and then you've got like a wireframe that would go this way. So it goes like this. And then it could maybe curve under a little bit. So you just wanna make sure that you're wrapping forms and not doing like very like straight lines. Cause if I started throwing lines this way, it makes absolute no sense with the form that's sitting here. So it's just something to be mindful of. I really hope that my camera is focused on this. It's gonna be a bummer if it's not, but like I said, that's what the Patreon's all about is trying to get me some better supplies for this. The, the My phone breaking was just a coincidence though. That just, my keys were my wallet and they hit the, um, the small lens on the one side of my camera, but the problem is, although I can shoot with this side, I just can't see what I'm shooting. It's like my camera is backwards. So these I'm going to do with the brush to keep them consistent with the lines I've already put down over here, which were brush lines. Um, and you know, actually, let me grab the brush. So again, I usually will get the brush wet, so I'm just sticking in the water and just shaking it around. I tap it a couple times and then I spin it on a towel. And then I'll spin it on my scrap paper. And again, you can see that in my intro to brush inking video. I show exactly what I'm doing. So and then here, going with the brush. And this, uh, this is a quicker and sometimes more effective way to get the, the lines the way that I want them to look. Everybody's different. Um, you'll notice that I throw my lines away from me. Some people pull. They actually will pull lines this way. Either, either is fine, you know, whatever is comfortable for you is what you want to get really good at, you know? It's art. If, if, if something is working for you and you're getting the effect that you like, 
and what. Now I have to be very mindful because this could still be wet. Danger zone. It isn't though, but yeah, you gotta be real careful. When you're putting down ink, especially with a Hunt 102, it stays wet a bit longer. The brush, although can lay down more ink, you know, like I could really push it down and throw a lot of ink down. Even that will dry a little bit quicker than a crow quill because the crow quill is kind of almost like dumping ink onto the, the piece. And again, go go to the introduction to Hunt 102 inking. You'll see what I'm talking about. I talk about the blip and the blob. Those blips and blobs will stay damp for a long time. And sometimes, you know, if you get enough wet stuff all spread out all over the page, then what you want to do is you may want to just step away from the piece for a few minutes and you know, just let it fully dry. So, what I'm doing now is I'm just doing all these, like, kind of tiers of anatomy that are overlapping and, you know, just all these forms that David's got that are really cool that create, like, the, the musculature of the arm and you can always go in and kind of trim these something gets slightly overthrown I mean I don't you know like I may throw little bits of white paint at, at the end through some of these parts just to make them match up more identically with what um, the original pencil stroke looks like sometimes you want to overthrow the line with the tool that you're using and the reason that you do that is just so that you get a very nice line for 99% of it, and that one little 1% that goes over or outside the panel border, that's easy to clean up, but you don't want to sacrifice the quality of, of a stroke that you're going to make because you don't want to go outside the panel border. I mean, you can you can throw tape down if you want to, um, you know, protect it like almost like a piece of um, vellum or something, you know, that, that completely blocks off an area so there's no, like, lines that you don't want hitting things, but... In general, it's not something that you need to worry about too much. You can always clean it up at the end, as long as it's not a ridiculous amount. So these are a little longer. I'm going to have to really kind of dig in for this, but... I don't want this video to go too long, so... And this is Marvel paper. It's actually a little rough. It's it's a smooth board, but it's... It feels rough. You know what? This might actually be their rough board. It's a very light rough, but I don't know. Well, it's, see, I know the camera's not focused. Just take my word for it. There's a texture on this that feels very similar to, like, um, Bristol Bristol paper, like you would get in, like, one of those Strathmore pads. It feels a little more like that than smooth board. Smooth board should almost feel icy, like, like almost like there's a bit of plastic over it. Not not completely, but it... it it's like paper with a seal. This doesn't feel like it has a seal on it. And this was drawn in 2007, so this would be Marvel paper from almost a decade ago. Isn't that crazy? Um, so anyway, um, okay, I'm going to start wrapping this up. But all I'm doing right now is I'm just blocking in things so that when I want, I can go in and just render this whole arm, which will be really, really fun. It's something that I enjoy doing. Um, I get pretty pretty detailed with it um, and uh, it's just fun fun stuff to do um, knuckles let's stay right on top of what David put here and it's very very dangerous to go in and outline too much of a piece I would not recommend it as you notice I'm kind of working in out the, the problem is is when you work on an outline you're already kind of creating a bit of a stiff drawing because you're not thinking about the form as much even though you might be mindful of the form it's better to think of it in terms of like that you're creating like a sculpture okay so I'm gonna leave you with that little smear right there. See, it was still damp. It's okay, though. It can kind of blend in with this stuff, but um, I'm kind of, I got my head poking behind the camera, so. Oh, and then, and I did actually make a hard copy of this piece, meaning a photocopy, so I would have it. But we can, like, match it up right here. Yes, this isn't so bad. It's like, it's a little, little shape right here, but that'll be easy to clean up. I'm pretty, um, 
pretty anal about things, but one thing that I've just learned from past experiences, you're better off fixing these little boo-boos um, at the end. As tempting as it is to go in with white right now and do it, it doesn't really matter, and the white will be cleaner at the end. If you put white paint down now and then you spend another like eight hours inking it, it's going to get kind of dirty, and the pencil lead will sort of smear on it, and it's just, there's really, really no reason to... Um, to worry about it, you know. This says ripped pants. Actually, it's kind of fun. I'm going to keep inking it. <laughs> we can go a little longer. It's Friday. Let's have some fun. Yeah, hopefully these videos, videos have been fun to check out. And, um, you know, you're getting at least a little something out of it. Um, okay, so this is knee. And again, I'm thinking of the drawing, you know, and that's the that's the main thing is it's it's not a bunch of techniques I'm throwing down. I'm looking at this like I'm drawing. It was kind of interesting in the live chat that I did the other day. Um, one of the very, very first questions was like, how would I ink a dragon? And listen to my answer on it, because I don't even talk about inking it. And I didn't even have an answer for him about inking it, but I could tell him how to draw it. That's the difference. I don't think about it like inking. I haven't in years. So to my benefit or detriment... Um, and it's not an egotistical thing. It's just like, I'll have people ask me for inking advice. I can't give inking advice. I can give drawing advice because I don't, it, it, the techniques just serve the piece. That's the bottom line. I, I just, you know, I can't stress that enough that it's, I'm thinking of little pieces of fabric that are all just chopped up on his knee and where they're sitting and how they created these little shapes and stuff like that. And again, with, with art, sometimes, you know what, you sort of bullshit things. Sorry to be crass, but there's little areas where, where even guys that draw really, really well fudge things to, um, you know, fill an area. So there's, there's a little bit of artistic license that goes into things. I may not do these fully black, but it's kind of a habit. I have to throw X's down, but I just want to be careful. I'm going to throw a few more lines in here just to kind of make this more gray. Um, okay, so I'm going to leave it at that for right now. But yeah, so the next video I'll come in and I'll actually start rendering this stuff. And again, this isn't going to be a full to tutorial of this whole thing because there's repetitive parts where it would be a very similar technique. But anyway, um, you get the idea. So we knocked that out pretty fast, all that. A little bit of dry brush in there. I actually kind of like it with some rendering lines going into it. I think that will actually look really cool. Gives it a little bit of grit. And again, this, the... It's going to be really rainy in this piece, so um, it'll actually add to the sort of hum of um, detail. So I don't really, I'm kind of a fan of dry brush uh, here and there, you know, within reason. I, I still like my stuff to look pretty tight and clean. Okay, I hope that this was in focus most of the video. If it's not, I apologize. I'm going to try to fix this camera tomorrow. And uh, please support my Patreon. There'll be a link in the description below. If you can do it, a dollar would be great anything helps it's all going to go to the channel and and gear and and software to make these videos better and better and better and to give me time to work on them okay and uh yeah if you haven't subscribed yet please do okay bye